All ladies and gents, World War I, 1915. We saw the 1914 videos of World War I, the first year of World War I, uh, where Archduke of Austria got assassinated. That kind of started all the chain event, where entire world basically got into war. So, Austria declared war on Serbia. Now, obviously, uh, Russia is ally of Serbia, so Russia started to mobilize in order to defend Serbia. Then Germany is an uh, ally of Austria, so Germany started to uh, mobilize because Russia started to mobilize. It's a stupid, weird thing. And then Germany declares war on Russia and France. Why? Because France was all ally of Russia. France didn't do anything and just Germany like, we are war at you and just started to invade that. Uh, Italy stays neutral even though Italy is ally of Austria and Germany. Uh, then uh, Germany uh, invades Belgium and UK basically you know said to Belgium we got you we got your back and UK sends the message to Germany like if you invade uh, Belgium we are going to there to attack you and Germans ignore it don't even send a reply just ignore it so British then uh, joins in and declares war on Germany uh, then basically trench warfare starts yeah, between uh, you know f France, uh, France and Britain versus uh, you know Germany. Uh, so trench warfare starts a massive trench at the you know France border. So trench warfare is just horrible, man. It's really really horrible. Uh, it's, between two trenches, there's a no, man, no man's land where all the fighting happens and just people basically dies. It's a suicidal area. People just leaps out of trenches and they get mowed down. It's just tre of all the warfare, of all the battles, trench warfare has the probably most casualties. Because basically a suicide thing. I didn't know that until, you know, uh, I started to react some videos of this. I saw a clip on the, you know, uh, what was that? Uh, that Rowan Atkinson, so Death Adder or something like that, I don't know. So in that I saw it and I'm like, damn, this is heavy. Then I started to do all the reaction videos and I started to find out what is trench warfare, how horrible it is and it's just no man's land and everything. So that was just horrible. Britain starts a naval blockade because we all know British with their navy is just dominance. We've seen that in Napoleonic Wars. Britain has always had this dominant navy for centuries. Everybody knows if all the fighting you do, you do on the sea and Britain is going to dominate you. So you, you know, devise your tactics around that. So Britain obviously started a naval blockade, but first time ever, German engineering, Germans comes up with, a, you know, the modern sense of submarine. Submarines have been before this, but not this level of this kind of submarine, because the submarine that we know of today basically emerged from here uh, German U-boats which had a massive range that almost could touch United States and was undetected and st could stay undetected for a long time so that kind of changed the whole whole element of it hold us for centuries Britain dominance on sea that was kind of like you know now it's a threat because doesn't matter how dominant you are with your boats if a, you know, a submarine just comes at you, you can't even see it and shoots a torpedo and takes you down, your dominance is went away. So that was a massive change of the you know, image of everything of the, for past centuries where Britain is just dominant. Now we're not so sure because there are submarines here. So we've seen this always, even in World War II, Germans always bring up some technology that gave them a massive edge. So yeah, that was something. Then Ottomans uh, uh, joined in the fight and attacked Russia. Uh, then basically world war happens. Where in Africa, South America and everywhere else this war starts. Because most of, most of those places are controlled by European countries, European colonies. So obviously war happens there. So a lot of people who says world wars, they were basically fought on Europe. No, not really because Europe kind of controlled everywhere at that time in Africa and lots of Asia's and places South America so basically war happened everywhere because war started on Europe so that was something uh, then Germany started to bomb UK and its cities 
I don't think that happened before this, right? I think uh, World War One. This is the first time it happened. So that must be surprising, because everybody has this mentality. When war happens, it basically happens at the border. Usually, the main cities are fine, uh, towns are fine until the war comes too close. But in here, uh, Britain has uh, cities and towns so close to the sea. Uh, Germany just basically sells them, and that kills a lot of c civilians. That's just horrible, man. Because you are just going on your day, you are in a city, you're like, you know what, war is happening, but here everything's fine. And suddenly bombs starts to drop and lots of people die. That's just horrible, man. Uh, then, uh, short truce happen, and uh, uh, all the soldiers start to play football in the trenches, in the no man's land. I mean, that's just ridiculous. No man's land has this, uh, you know... Uh, so psychology behind it like it's so horrible where dead bodies lie and everything nobody's even go there to pick up the dead bodies because they die too so dead bodies lying around is just horrible and they start to play football there i think there was some psychology behind it that if you play football and make a light of this situation maybe next time when trench warfare starts people would be a bit more confident than just afraid i think it would be that but yeah all of that happened so that was 1914, the first year of World War I. So now let's watch World War I 1915 Epic History TV. January 1915. World War I is just five months old. And already around one million soldiers have fallen. A war that began in the Balkans has engulfed much of the world. The Central Powers, Germany, Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire, fight the Allies. Britain, France, Russia, Serbia and Montenegro, Belgium and Japan. In Poland and the Baltic, the Russian army has suffered a string of massive defeats, but continues to battle German and Austro-Hungarian forces. Austro-Hungarian troops have also suffered huge losses and are humiliated by their failure to defeat Serbia. In the Caucasus Mountains, Russian and Ottoman forces fight each other in freezing winter conditions. While on the Western Front, French, British and Belgian troops are dug in facing the Germans, in trenches stretching from the English Channel to Switzerland. That is a massive trench though, entire France border in that side, damn, to what, two, three hundred mile long trench. As part of the world's first strategic bombing campaign, Germany sends two giant airships known as Zeppelins to bomb Britain. They hit the ports of Kings Lynn and Great Yarmouth, damaging houses and killing four civilians. At sea, at the damn, this is horrible. Britain always had bad luck about this in World War One, World War Two, where their cities just get bombed and people just die. Damn. Battle of Dogger Bank. The British Navy sinks one German cruiser, but the rest of the German squadron escapes. Command of the seas has yeah, allowed so Britain to impose a naval blockade of Germany preventing vital supplies, including food, from reaching the country by sea. Germany now retaliates with its own blockade. It declares the waters around the British Isles to be a war zone, where its U-boats will attack Allied merchant ships without warning. Britain relies on imported food to feed its population. Germany plans to starve her into surrender. That is just... Threatening Britain by naval blockade of a kind. Damn, those submarines just turned around everything, didn't it? If you do this, no merchant is going to do business with you because they'd be afraid. Like uh, usually, whenever the you know naval warfare happens, it's been happening for centuries by now this time. But whenever it happens, people look at the horizon like somebody's coming. Yes, in submarines, you don't even know when it's coming, and you just die. I mean, that's even more, you know, scary than anything. On 
the Eastern Front, German Field Marshal von Hindenburg launches a winter offensive and inflicts another massive defeat on the Russian army at the Second Battle of Masurian Lakes. The Russians lose up to 200,000 men, half of them surrendering amid freezing winter conditions. The Russians have more success against Austria-Hungary. The city of Shemishul falls after a four-month siege, netting the Russians 100,000 prisoners. Austria-Hungary's total losses now reach two million. Meanwhile, the British and French send warships to the Dardanelles to threaten Constantinople, capital of the Turkish Ottoman Empire. They believe a show of force will quickly cause Turkey to surrender. They bombard Turkish shore forts in the narrow straits. But three battleships are sunk by mines and three more damaged. The attack is called off. On the Western Front, the British attack at Neuve Chapelle. But the advance is soon halted by German barbed wire and machine guns. British and Indian units suffer 11,000 casualties, about a quarter of the attacking force. Six weeks later, at the Second Battle of Ypres, the Germans attack with poison gas for the first time on the Western Front. There you go. There's that poison gas thing. <laughs> oh my God. World War I was kind of scary in a lot of way because lots of new things were getting introduced. Submarines, poison gas and all these things. I mean, World War II people expected some horrible things. When in World War I, you don't even know things like this would happen. So that was seriously horrible. Especially in trench warfare like that. Damn. A cloud of lethal chlorine forces Allied troops to abandon their trenches. But the Germans don't have enough reserves ready to exploit the advantage. Soldiers on both sides are quickly supplied with crude gas masks. Yeah, because I remember he hearing a story where they released the gas but didn't account for the wind. So it backfired. It came back and, you know, it hit all their soldiers, all those gas. So then they had to supply with all these masks and it was just horrible. And they had all these long-term effects in the bodies and, oh, it's so horrible, man. As a chemical weapons arms race begins. The Allies land ground troops at Gallipoli, including men of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, the Anzacs. Their goal is to take out the shore forts that are preventing Allied warships reaching Constantinople. But they immediately meet fierce ter By the way, that chemical warfare started an event, a chain of event that is even felt right now, because it just gave every country in the world a uh, sense that in any war, in massive war like this, you could be faced with this kind of chemical attacks. So that gave rise to all the chemical weapons and biological weapons. So lots of country has, you know, secret facilities with the really bad biological weapons, viruses basically. That would make current crisis uh, basically look like a firecracker. So that's just ridiculous. Turkish resistance and are pinned down close to the shore. The day before the landings, the Ottoman Empire begins the systematic deportation and murder of ethnic Armenians living within its borders. The Armenians are a long persecuted ethnic and religious minority, suspected of supporting Turkey's enemies. There you Tens go, Armenian genocide. No? Men, women, and children are transported to the Syrian desert and left to die. In all, more than a million Armenians perish. That is just horrible. The Allies man. condemn the events as a crime against humanity and civilization and promise to hold the perpetrators criminally responsible. To this day, the Turkish government disputes the death toll and that these events constituted a genocide. They don't just dispute it, they just say it's not a ge it's not genocide, it didn't even happen. That's to me, it really pisses me off, man. If you did shitty things, just admit to it at least.
On the Eastern Front, a joint German-Austro-Hungarian offensive in Galicia breaks through Russian defences, recapturing Chemischul and taking 100,000 prisoners. It is the beginning of a steady advance against Russian forces. At sea, the British passenger liner Lusitania, sailing from New York to Liverpool, is torpedoed by a German U-boat off the coast of Ireland without warning. 1,198 passengers and crew perish, including 128 Americans. US President Woodrow Wilson and the American public are outraged. But Germany insists the liner was a fair target as the British used her to carry military supplies. In May, the Allies launched the second... So let me get this straight. Germany sinks a ship and over 100 Americans die and Americans don't declare war. Now there's a single Americans die somewhere and that's just USA is at war. So 100, over 100 people die, USA didn't get involved. That doesn't make sense to me. After hearing this, anyone would think that that's it, America just entered the war, but no. Battle of Artois, in another effort to break through the German lines. The French make the main attack at Vimy Ridge, while the British launch supporting attacks at Aubert Ridge and Festubert. The Allies sustain 130,000 casualties and advance just a few thousand yards. Damn, people are dying like f flies, man. Look at that. In the Napoleonic Wars, these casualties felt so big. Now there's every battle, just 100,000 there, 200,000 there. It's like nothing. That's why lots of Europe is empty, in a, especially in men, because lots of female uh, outnumbers men because of this, because of these wars, especially in Russia. That summer, above the Western Front, the Fokker Eindecker helps Germany win control of the air. It's one of the first aircraft with a machine gun able to fire forward through its propeller, thanks to a new invention known as interrupter gear. Allied aircraft losses mount. <laughs> Germany just invents things and has dominance over everything. That we saw in World War II, we see, we see here in World War I. This is ridiculous. They have dominance in uh, you know, sea because of submarines. Now they have dominance over sky because of this. They might not have the, you know, massive army or the most competent army or anything, but that technology always gives them the edge and makes them really threatening. ...rapidly in what becomes known as the Fokker Scourge. Oh, now it enters, okay. Italy, swayed by British and French promises of territorial gains at Austria-Hungary's expense, joins the Allies. There you go. Declaring war. In last video I was surprised that Italy was with, you know, Germany and Austria. Like, really? It was neutral, but it was allies of them. Because I always knew World War I, Italy was part of the, you know, Britain, France and Russia and them. Like this, okay. Or on Austria-Hungary, and later the Ottoman Empire and Germany. The Italian army makes its first assault against Austro-Hungarian positions along the Isonzo River, but is repulsed with heavy losses. Meanwhile, the Allies face a crisis on the Eastern Front. The Russians have begun a general retreat, abandoning Poland. German troops enter Warsaw on the 5th of August. Tsar Nicholas II dismisses the Russian army's commander-in-chief, Grand Duke Nicholas, and takes personal command. It will prove disastrous for the Tsar, as he becomes more and more closely tied to Russian military defeat. Yeah, we know what happened. At Gallipoli, the Allies land reinforcements at Suvla Bay, but neither they nor a series of fresh attacks by the Anzacs can break the deadlock. Conditions for both sides are terrible. Troops are tormented not only by the enemy, but by heat, flies and sickness. In the Atlantic, a German U-boat sinks the liner SS Arabic. 44 are lost, including three Americans. In response to further US warnings, Germany ends all attacks on passenger ships. There you go. 
you are saying like yeah, 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 yeah. now this is the last time man and Germany like you know what let's not let's not try and test this because if USA joins in it's gonna be a bit too much On the Western Front, the Allies mount their biggest offensive of the war so far, designed to smash through the front and take pressure off their beleaguered Russian ally. The French attack in the Third Battle of Artois and Second Battle of Champagne. The British, with the help of poison gas, attack at loss. Despite initial gains, the attacks soon get bogged down with enormous losses on all sides. Allied troops land at Salonika in Greece to open a new front against the Central Powers and bring aid to Serbia. But the Allies are too late. Bulgaria joins the Central Powers and their joint offensive overruns Serbia in two months. That winter, the remnants of the Serbian army escape through the Albanian mountains. Their losses are horrific. By the end of the war, a third of Serbia's army has been killed, the highest proportion of any nation. Fierce fighting continues on the Italian front as Italian troops launch the third and fourth battles of the Isonzo. Austro-Hungarian forces, though outnumbered, are dug in on the high ground and impossible to dislodge. In the Middle East, a British advance on Baghdad is blocked by Turkish forces at the Battle of Tessifon, 25 miles south of the city. The British withdraw to Kut, where they are besieged. The Allies abandon the Gallipoli campaign. 83,000 troops are secretly evacuated without alerting Turkish forces. Not a man is lost. It's one of the best executed plans of the war. The campaign has cost both sides a quarter of a million casualties. 1915 is a bad year for the Allies. Enormous losses for no tangible gains. But there is no talk of peace. Instead, all sides prepare for even bigger offensives in 1916, with new tactics developed from earlier failures. All sides still believe a decisive battlefield victory is within grasp. Epic History TV relies on the support of viewers like you. Please visit our Patreon page and consider pledging as little as one dollar per Yeah, people go to Patreon and, you know, support Epic History TV. It's a really good channel. Damn, this world war seems so stupid because when you're at war at some country, it makes sense that you take over that country, you take over resources, things like that, like USA did with Iraq. Makes sense. The entire world is at war and what are you fighting for even if you win lots of places are destroyed who gain what is just for ego so world war seems so stupid and it all because one guy got shot because of some other guy it has nothing to do with the nascent powers it's just ego led to all these things damn one guy got shot and entire world is at war that's so stupid at least World War II had some ideology behind it, like Germany, you know, the, you know, the Hitler was had some ideology behind it, where he wanted to dominate a war like Napoleon did. And that kind of makes sense, where people just gather up to fight him. That kind of makes sense. When World War I is just one guy gets shot and people rather do, you know, de-escalate things, just escalated everything. Like, you know, I have your back, I have your back, and everybody just started on war. That's just stupid. Alright, we'll see World War 1 1916 next time. Uh, even though, you know, I think USS stance here was really good. Like some people died, they didn't just resort to war, like we are at war. I mean, that's what basically everybody did. That was a stupid thing. Not all countries should have jumped like that, like we, we have your back. No, just chill out. 
the USS stance was kind of good, like not jumping on the bandwagon to just attack everybody. Alright, if you like my reaction, please don't forget to like and subscribe.